guys what's up welcome back i want to show you the new fruiting chamber that i just finished and uh, this has been on the back burner in the back of my brain for a long time but i finally got the time and the equipment all put together and i was able to assemble it and uh, i thought it was going to be awesome and honestly it exceeds my expectations even a little bit i think it's a great design i think if you guys are just getting started out and uh, want to put together a fruiting chamber i think it's a it would be a great design for you and i'm going to go through and explain every part in this fruiting chamber but i'm also going to link everything in the description of the video in case you want to build this exact chamber but uh it's really just the concept um that uh that is important and you don't have to spend as much money as i did on an expensive shelving unit you can uh definitely cheap out on some things and still put together a really nice fruiting chamber. It's really just the concept, as I mentioned, and uh, this really doesn't translate to like a commercial type setup, commercial grow operation. But if you're just trying to grow at home for yourself or maybe you and some friends, this is a, this is a really nice, easy to maintain, very effective setup. So I'm going to go through everything here, uh, but first I want to preface this by saying that when I first started out growing mushrooms, uh, I did what a lot of people do. I built a Martha style setup, the mini greenhouse. I actually had two of these going in my basement at one time, and I had these long humidity supply hoses going to them and these long vent hoses and at first it was great. I was like, wow, I engineered this awesome, <laughs> you know, beast of a fruiting chamber. But what happens with those guys is uh, eventually, you know, they have the thin wire tubing frames, the thin wire shelves, and they rust out on you. And those hollow cavities just become mold magnets. And the zippers get all corroded and the plastic corrodes because you try and clean it. And the whole thing eventually ends up in the dumpster. And uh, this design I'm going to show you here is just a lot easier to maintain, a lot easier to clean. And you'll get a lot more longevity out of it because there's no metal parts. Uh, you're way better off going with uh, composite or plastic for your shelving unit. Just trying to keep everything simple, keep your hose runs very short. Uh, but before I uh, told you guys how great it was, I wanted to try and run some mushrooms in here as well. And you can see I have some Bratislavian blue oysters going on top and some king oysters on the bottom shelf. And uh, they're both looking really nice. Uh, the Bratislavian blues on the top are an Ostriatus strain. And having some oysters in your fruiting chamber is a great way to test if you have sufficient fresh air exchange because oysters are very very susceptible to uh, high co2 and uh, you know they'll get all leggy on you and i am top fruiting these uh, so they're always gonna those those stems are gonna extend a little bit off the surface but if your fae is good uh, they're gonna flatten out nicely just like these are so i'm pretty confident i nailed my fresh air exchange here so first of all i'll show you guys my lights uh, what i'm using now are leds and these are GE LEDs, and they fit right in a fluorescent housing. But uh, the cool thing about these is they're actually adjustable. They have a switch on the one side of the bulb, and I have them set to 6500K, which is high in the blue spectrum right now. That's a standard wavelength for mushroom growing, but they are adjustable. Uh, you can turn them down to like daylight and then almost like a warm red light. So that might be fun to play with eventually trying to play with some different uh, light spectrums and seeing how the mushrooms react. But uh, so I have two banks up above. So on the bottom, I have a 70 quart storage tote. It's just a simple shallow storage tote. I got it Lowe's and I took the lid. Uh, the lid was pretty thin plastic and just with a heavy sharp pair of scissors, I was able to cut it off right uh, at the union where it joins up to the, uh, the shelving unit. And I was able to cut that nice clean just some heavy sharp scissors and then I cut a hole with a hole saw right uh, through the top of the lid and I put this little 80 millimeter fan and this 80 millimeter fan is from the house of hydro this is the 80 millimeter waterproof fan kit from the house of hydro and they did an awesome job uh, this is a really cool little unit I guess they tested a bunch of fans for durability and this one turned out to be the best and I love it so far. 
cool thing with this fan is too that it comes with this little controller so you can control the speed and that was clutch in me uh, nailing the FAE and the humidity in this chamber. So this fan, I uh, just have it sitting over that hole that I cut with the hole saw on the lid. And I'm using some, actually some Micropose injection ports that I just cut in half to make a little frame to hold it in place. And that's working really well. Uh, this has a little connector that I just have clipped to the side of the tote. And it goes right to the controller, which is over near my humidifier. At the moment, I have the fan controller on the lowest setting, and that seems to be working really well. When I had it kicked up higher, it was just uh, drying the chamber out too much. So having that controller and have it on the lowest setting seems to be perfect. So mushrooms, as they're growing, they're expelling CO2. And the CO2 is heavy, and it'll actually fall, tend to fall towards the bottom of the fruiting chamber. So the idea here is that that CO2 is going to fall down through the chamber to the bottom and that little 80 millimeter low CFM fan is just creating a constant airflow, pulling that CO2 from the top of the chamber down to the bottom, up and out through the fan. I'm very careful when I pick my mushrooms. I just pick them early to reduce the spore load. Uh, I have this fan just venting into the open air. But you could easily attach a piece of ductwork to this if you wanted to vent it outside. Uh, I've done that before myself. But uh, if you attach any ducting to this, it is going to create some back pressure. So you'd probably have to kick up the speed of your fan. So sitting in our clear plastic storage tote is the foundation of our fruiting chamber. And I splurged on my shelving unit this time, guys. This is a Cambro cam shelving unit. And I love it, but it was expensive. This shelving unit was about $250, which I know sounds crazy, but uh, I am not disappointed. I'm not upset that I bought this thing. Uh, you do not have to spend that much. You could go with a much cheaper plastic shelving unit, but again, I definitely recommend plastic. One thing I like about the shelving unit is it's extremely adjustable. It's very easy to adjust the, uh, the crossbars. And the shelving plates actually pull in and out. It's not one shelving plate all the way across. They're these little individual shelving plates that you can add, remove. So uh, you don't need any more in there than what you need to hold your fruiting blocks, which is cool. Uh, everything pops apart really easy. And the uh, shelving plates are actually uh, able to go in the dishwasher as well, which is great for when you're cleaning your fruiting chamber. It also has these cool adjustable attachment points, which allow me to put crossbars actually extending out the other side of the shelving unit, which is how I have this set up. So that little side shelf actually holds our humidifier, which is pretty cool. It kind of makes this an all-inclusive unit. Uh, this thing could go anywhere. Uh, you can pick the whole thing up and move it, everything. And uh, you need two people. I can get on one side and have somebody else grab the other side and you can just pick it up and move it. This could literally go anywhere. You could have this on a countertop, in a spare bedroom, uh, pretty much anywhere. Now, this shelving unit uh, is about 18 by 30 outside diameter. And uh, it could have been about six feet tall, although I cut it down to about four and a half feet because obviously I was limited by my ceiling space. And my lighting there but if you were going to put this on the floor you could go even higher you know you could have that full six foot of the shelving unit that's always an option i actually prefer to have mine up on a table i prefer a tabletop setup like this it just seems to stay cleaner you know you get down on the floor you get more dirt dust in my house i have a golden retriever so dog hair so i've always preferred to keep it up off the floor and it just seems to stay cleaner that way for me but you can have it on the floor if you want to. So that's our shelving unit. You can see I have my humidifier and my controls, as I mentioned, on this little offshoot on the side. And I actually used Micropose injection ports again on the end of those rails to make sure that my shelving plate couldn't slide right off the end. So that's pretty convenient. So that's the shelving unit. Let's talk about humidification now. This little humidifier, I love. Uh, my only complaint about it is the reservoir size. It's only about 2.5 liters. And uh, I do get about a day and a half out of it. 
but you do have to keep on it, refilling it. But I'm also in the middle of winter, so this thing's cranking a lot to keep up with the humidity because the air has been very dry. This is a Beta Zoer Visible Mist Humidifier, and it's actually intended for reptile enclosures. And I've learned that all ultrasonics are not created equal. Uh, some make larger water droplet sizes, uh, some make smaller. And uh, the smaller water droplet sizes, like this one puts off, do a much better job in a mushroom fruiting chamber because you don't get accumulation of water droplets on the shelving, on your plastic. Uh, you don't get the water pooling that can be a source for contamination. I was using a regular home visible mist humidifier prior to this. And I was having those issues with that and uh, I was getting some pooling and that can lead to mold growth and that. So once I switched to this beta zoer, uh, the visible mist just seems to dissolve into the air much nicer and it just does a better job humidifying the fruiting chamber and keeping everything clean. So it comes with these little uh, flex hoses and that's how it pumps the visible mist into the chamber. And as I mentioned before, I like to keep my hose runs very short now because the hoses can actually be a source for contamination as well. Your hoses, the longer they are, the harder they are to clean, and you do need to clean them regularly or else you'll get mold growth in them as well. I also purchased this little splitter for the top of the humidifier that was optional. I haven't used it yet, but I figured I might find an application for that eventually in case you wanna send humidity a couple different directions. And I got some extra hoses. What I've been doing is every so often I'm just changing the hoses out and letting the other one dry out. And again, that's just uh, helping to prevent any contamination in your supply hoses. Uh, you do definitely have to clean your entire chamber once a week, guys. Uh, you just want to keep ahead of it, keep on top of it, or else uh, you're just going to cause yourself more problems in the long run. So I'm controlling the humidifier with an Inkbird IHC 200 humidity sensor. And this is a really common uh, humidity controller. These are fairly inexpensive and uh, seems to work really well so far. I've only been running it a few weeks, but uh, it's worked flawlessly actually so far. I have it set at 86% with uh, two percentage point variability. So when it gets down to 84, it'll kick on and run the visible mist and humidify the chamber back up. Just have the sensor hanging kind of near the bottom in the middle of the humidity chamber. You just want to make sure you place it where it won't have any direct contact with water. You wouldn't want to place it anywhere where it's going to get dripped on or anything like that because that can mess with your sensor. The outside dimensions of this Cambro cam shelving unit are about 30 inches by 18 inches. So in order to enclose it and make our tent, what I'm using is a large plastic gusseted bag from Uline. It's a 30 by 18 by 48 gusseted bag. It's a virgin polyethylene, nice and clear, lets plenty of light through, really easy to see inside the chamber. These bags, I bought a hundred of them. I want to say they're about $1.50 a piece. So I have a lot. Uh, typically you can do, you know, a couple runs of mushrooms and then you'll probably want to change your bag out. And again, you're not held to a single plastic covering here. You have one that you can easily change out when you need to because eventually your plastic breaks down. That's just the way it is. So I have facilities here locally where I can recycle clean plastic bags. So when I'm ready to get rid of this, I'll just recycle it, pop a new bag over it, and we're good to go. So the last thing I need to talk about is access. You need access to your fruiting chamber. You need to be able to add blocks, remove blocks, move blocks around. Uh, I never pick in my fruiting chamber. That's not a good idea. You generally want to remove your blocks from the fruiting chamber out onto the table when you pick because you don't want to drop little pieces of sawdust, bits of mushrooms, that kind of thing down into the bottom of your chamber. That's just another vector for contamination. So what I did is on the back side where my little offshoot shelf is for the humidifier, I just slit the bag on up both uprights on that side, basically all the way to the top. And I'm just holding it together at the bottom with these little clips. And when I remove the clips, I can easily just uh, open up the chamber, 
and access it and move things around. So that's it, guys. I love this setup. I would love to hear what you guys think of it. But uh, I would highly, highly recommend a setup like this. And uh, you, as I said, you don't have to spend 250 bucks on a shelving unit. You could go with a lot cheaper plastic shelving unit. So that's it, guys. I'll go ahead and link everything in the description in case you want to put together this exact setup. But uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I always love talking over this stuff with you guys in comments. You guys usually think of things that I didn't think of. So far, this chamber is performing beautifully. I can't wait to try some different mushrooms in it, like some shiitakes and lion's mane. But uh, hit me up, let me know what you think, and I'll catch you next video.